independent contractors versus employees. This is something I've been kind of hinting at, not hinting at, just explicitly telling you. Uh, we'll be seeing this soon enough. Now, an independent contractor is a person or business who provides services to another entity, but is not an employee of that entity. On the other hand, an employee is a person who works for an employer and receives a salary or wages in exchange for their services. The main differences here are the degree of control, independence, and responsibility. And this is a very important concept in, in the real world as well. For the exam, yeah, it's important. But again, in the real world, there are many examples. Why is that important? Because if you're an employee, you have the right to different things such as health insurance and reasonable and consistent wages. And there's a lot more protections for employees. Whereas independent contractors, you're kind of just uh, left out there to dry and you do not have as many protections. But as an independent contractor, you can show up when you want, you can wear what you want. As long as the job gets done, generally, that's how that works. Now, in the terms of agency law, the distinction between an independent contractor and an employee is important because it determines the legal relationship. So in real life, it determines benefits and a lot of things that people care about. But for the purpose of the exam, this determines legal responsibility, the entity that hires the agent and the agent. In general, the principal has more control over an employee. We can tell the employee, hey, you got to show up at a certain time, you got to wear this, but you can't really tell the independent contractor that. And this goes off a lot of precedent. So it's a lot harder to say that someone's an independent contractor if I pay them to show up at my accounting firm nine to five, five days a week, and I tell them you have to use Excel, you have to do this, you have to communicate with the client doing this. To, to argue that that would be an independent contractor wouldn't really hold up in, in court. Whereas, you know, if I have someone who, a delivery driver who picks up packages for me once a week and that's the only time I see them, I probably couldn't argue that they're an employee because uh, they're not really acting in the manner that an employee would. So, in general, the principal has more control over an employee and is therefore more likely to be held responsible for the actions, whereas an independent contractor has more independence and is usually held responsible for their own actions. Now, for example, if an employee causes harm to a third party while performing their job duties, the employer may be held liable under that respondeat superior doctrine. However, if an independent contractor causes harm while performing services, the principal may not be held liable unless they were directly involved in the harm or negligent in hiring the contractor. We see here why Uber, Lyft, all of them would not want to classify their drivers as employees because A, they would be a lot of benefits they'd have to pay out, they'd have to do workers comp, they'd have to do all these other things. That's just the benefits and all that. But liability wise, also Uber and Lyft would be a lot more responsible for all the accidents that happen. I mean, you're talking driving cars everywhere. That's going to result in you know, a decent amount of accidents. However, if these drivers are independent contractors, then Uber and Lyft have a lot less responsibility in terms of the benefits they have to offer them, a lot less responsibility in terms of legal repercussions and liability, all that. So we, we see the differences there. Now, as a person, you may want to be an employee. You may not want to be an employee. It depends on your own personal situation. So one's not better than the other. It really just depends on the specific circumstances and each party what they want. Maybe both parties want the status to be an independent contractor, and that's fine. But also, the courts could disagree. Even if both of you, if the employer and the independent contractor want to be an independent contractor, the courts may rule that, no, you're actually an employee. So that's just something to note for the courts. Here are some factors to consider. Now, again, if uh, you're showing up, you have to wear a certain hat. You have to wear a certain, you know, you're showing up to uh, Burger King, Wendy's, McDonald's, something like that. You have to wear a hat. You have to show up at a certain time. You have to say certain phrases. You have to do certain things. That's probably going to make you an employee because they have a lot more control over you. Whereas if you are uh, just picking up food from the warehouse and delivering it to the physical restaurant, that may be an independent contractor. You can do whatever you want. You can say whatever you want. You can just act however you want. Differences, and we'll talk about these a lot more in depth here. But first off, we see the level of control. The level of control the principal has over the work of the agent. An employee is usually subject to more direct supervision and control by the employer, while an independent contractor has more control over how they perform their services. Equipment and tools, this is another big one. An independent contractor usually provides their own equipment and tools, such as Uber and Lyft, they provide their own car, while an employee is usually provided with them by the employer. Now, Uber and Lyft drivers, they, they're driving cars. I believe they are, I'm not an expert here, I'm just giving you examples. I believe they are sometimes sent a phone or maybe all the times by those companies. However, if you think about it, what is the more significant equipment and tools? That's probably the car not the phone that costs a couple hundred dollars compared to the car that costs a couple thousand dollars. Payment, an independent contractor is typically paid on a per project or per hour basis, while an employee is paid a regular salary or hour, hourly wage. Now, are you gonna see a lot of questions where you have to determine if someone's an independent contractor or an employee? 
You may see it, you may not. It may be an indirect way of answering a question. Again, if someone's an independent contractor, this is a way for you to see question asking about who's liable. And if it's an independent contractor, probably that independent contractor will not be held liable. So it's important in direct ways and indirect ways, and just kind of different ways you'd see. Now, benefits and taxes. Employees are typically provided with benefits such as health insurance and paid time off, and the employer withholds taxes from their paycheck. However, independent contractors are responsible for their own benefits and withholding taxes and paying taxes themselves. The duration of the relationship and employee relationship is usually ongoing, while an independent contractor relationship is typically a specific project or time period. And lastly, the right to terminate. An employer can typically terminate an employee at any time, while an independent contractor is usually subject to the terms of their contract. Not without going too much into employment law. I mean, with each of these points, there are massive uh, amounts of uh, legal regulations and people who work fully in employment law, who work fully in benefit law, tax law, all that stuff. So we could go much more in detail with that. I mean, we could. It wouldn't benefit us for the exam. But if you ever want to have a fun legal co conversation, always happy to do so. Just let me know. Here are some great examples. Independent contractors as agents. Now, independent contractors are individuals or entities that provide services to another party under a specific agreement, but are not considered employees. Just want to beat that to death. I want to make sure you know. Whether an independent contractor is considered an agent depends on the nature and extent of the principal's control over their actions and the scope of their authority. And I just keep going back to the uh, ride sharing example. You can't really tell a, a driver when to get on the road, when to stop driving, what to wear, what color the car needs to be. You can incentivize them by offering those surge prices, but you can't tell them anything. So that's why these individuals are likely more independent contractors. Now we've got our first example. We've got a freelance graphic designer. A freelance graphic designer is hired by a company to design a logo. The designer is given creative freedom and is not subject to the company's direct control, pretty much just as long as they get that logo done. In this case, the graphic designer is an independent contractor, but not an agent as they do not have the authority to make decisions or act on the company's behalf beyond the specific task of designing the logo. Next up, we got a real estate agent. A real estate agent is hired by a homeowner to sell their property. The agent has the authority to list the property, negotiate potential buyers, and enter into contracts on behalf of the homeowner. Although the real estate agent operates independently, they're considered an agent due to their authority to act on behalf of the homeowner in selling the property. So we see we've got two independent contractors, but one is an agent, the other is not an agent. I mean, a lot of times too, it really just comes down to, are you client facing or not? Generally, if you're client facing, you uh, would have some uh, agency in there, but if you are not, you, you likely would not. And lastly, we've got some more examples. We've got example three, consulting firm. An employee hires a consulting firm to provide strategic advice on business expansion. The consulting firm conducts research and presents its findings to the company, but does not have the authority to make decisions or enter into contracts on the company's behalf. In this case, the consulting firm is gonna be considered an independent contractor, but not an agent as they only provide advice and do not have the authority to act on the company's behalf. And lastly here, we have a construction contractor. A homeowner hires a construction contractor to build an extension to their house. The contractor manages the construction process, hires subcontractors, and ensures that the project is completed according to the homeowner's specifications. Now, although the contractor has some decision-making authority related to the construction business, they are not going to be considered an agent because they do not have the authority to enter into contracts or make decisions on behalf of the homeowner beyond the specific scope of the construction project. These are wonderful examples, not only dealing with the agency law, but also dealing with independent contractor first employee status. Now in summary here, whether an independent contractor is considered an agent depends on the extent of the principal's control over their actions and the scope of their authority to act on the principal's behalf. Independent contractors who have the authority to make decisions or enter into contracts on behalf of the principal may be considered agents, while those who only provide specific services without authority are not. Let's wrap it up with a nice summary and call it a day. Hey there, are you ready to not only pass your CPA exams, but truly understand and enjoy the material while studying? I know it seems impossible, right? Especially to enjoy the material? We'll do it together. Tap into the power of cpa.examprep.ai, where we've got personalized quizzes, multiple choice questions, memorization guides, flashcards, simulations, all tailored to your learning. Our adaptive study planning puts you on the fastest path to success and lifts you back up if you fall behind. Avoid wasting your precious time and money attempting an exam with a low chance of passing because who wants that? We want to get you through this process as quick as possible. Our exam readiness prediction lets you walk in with confidence knowing that you're prepared for success on exam day.
Thankfully, there's no payment method needed to get started. So why don't you come join us? Visit cpa.examprep.ai and let's achieve your exam success together.